G'day folks, Andy here from McDowell Manor. Actually, I'm going to post this, I think, tonight. Um, I know I'm not finished, but that way, like Davey gave me the advice about put it on the, on the concrete pads, on the pavers, that was good. Um, so I'm wondering, maybe someone will chirp in something vital before I get all that top screwed on and then find out I have to pull the bloody thing off. <laughs> so, a fair bit more progress, actually. Let me show you what I've done. Down the bottom. We have various brackets which now attach the legs. This one's been done twice. Most of the others have only been done once, but I varied where they were. So I tried to cover as many angles as I could. Um, so hopefully that won't allow it to walk. She, um, I've put the top on, obviously. Um, and things are really well screwed this time. So there's a 100mm screw goes through the bottom of this, through that, into this um, and there's that sort of thing all over the place you can see the idea last time I really just had those paling boards sitting by themselves this time they've got reinforced structural pine behind them um, so obviously that's going to be one hell of a lot more stable um, so I'm starting to get a little bit cocky I was thinking this morning I might actually run a brace between these side legs up the middle on this one side uh, I'm not sure because I'm going to screw all palings onto there so you know even palings will brace it uh, but anyway that's where we're at at the moment I want to finish the top off today so hopefully next time I switch this camera on you'll see a completed top okay we have a complete top folks with added bracing struts inside and out um, I have leveled up those bottom bracing well they're not perfectly level I did it with just by you know looking um, I will put a shelf on them Paul I think that was a bloody great idea mate um, and when I thought that too I thought well actually I don't want it level because if water gets in there it's just going to sit so if it is a little bit unlevel that's probably a good thing that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it Alright, so what's got to happen now? I've got to still put the back on um, and this one side, that'll keep the worst of the rain out. Um, we've got to line it and then we've got to plumb it. Okay, so I put an off-cut bit of paling down there and thought, oh yeah, these palings will make a better shelf because that way you've got little joins and, you know, I was worried about the drainage. Well, bugger me, as soon as I screwed it on, I thought, Andy, this is a whole set of another braces. So not only, Paul, you bloody genius from life in Thailand, not only, brother, did you give me an extra set of shelves to get my food and stuff off the ground, but you created another whole bracing mechanism right the way along. If this thing moves, my house will have been hit by a meteor, I swear. It's got to be bloody solid. In fact, if there's a tornado, I think I'll run and hide under the aquaponics. <laughs> Well, I had to pull up stumps, I'm afraid. Um, that means stop work. Um, ran out of palings. So, um, obviously, la I made the shelves that I didn't have last time, so that took a whole heap of wood. But more than happy, more than happy I did that. So you can see, what's that, probably about two palings left. And I really only got two on the top, on the side, uh, behind that fish market sign. Um, so I'll get some more palings and we'll finish that off. Um, but yeah, that's pretty good. After that we start, I'll drill a few holes and then we start putting liners in. Jeez, those quails are going off. Okay, what you're looking at there is the liner. Over here you can see that's the overflow. It'll go there, I'll run a bit of pipe out the back end of it, just so it falls down into the tank. And that's where you're looking at the standpipe will be. So it's just a case now of put the liner in, um, cut it where those holes are as minimally as possible, obviously. 
uh, just enough to poke the pipe through from the bottom or the side in that case um, we'll hook her up and that's the outlet over there so with the standpipe on it regular outlet that's our if there's an accident and things overflow it goes straight back down into the tank and the inlet I think I'll still run up and over the top rather than pierce it although I did spend four bucks if I want to poke a hole in the side somewhere uh, I got a little 19 mil uni seal which is the poly pipe size that I use I'd rather avoid doing that if I can just to gain a few a few centimetres seems a bloody silly thing to risk another hole in the liner so if I can avoid that I will but we'll get this we'll try and get this hooked up and see how she all comes together eh? getting close now folks getting close the liner is now in position temporarily tacked up only uh, the pipes are in position, not quite completed. If you look at the stand pipe, so that bottom bit is actually the bulkhead that comes up through the, the wood. Um, there's just a little pipe extender. So that'll be the highest the water gets to that level. And then there's an overflow in case for some reason it continues to rise, which runs straight back down into the tank. Um, this pipe you can see it's been cut that goes over that little fellow and that creates the lowest level that the water will drain to alrighty I'll show you the pipe that's coming out from the bottom so it's that big black fella that runs all the way along here and I'll cut that off once I know it works and that will then feed back into the filter box on the corner there um, so that's how it's planned to work if all goes to plan. Oh, there is a bit more because I haven't hooked up. If you, you can hear it, but that black pipe down there um, is the in pipe. You can probably see the water coming out of it. Um, that water will be running back up into the tank. So that's the, that'll be the input, that's the output, and that's the safety valve. All right, so I've hooked up the in pipe. That's where it comes out of the ta fish tank and it runs all the way upside here and comes out down that end. Now not terribly strongly and the issue there, I'll come around and show you from the other side, fairly small pipe and it's got to run all that distance up into the bed. Now I do actually have a much bigger 3000 litre an hour, that one, the current one's 1000. So if I can't get any things working properly, though I'm pretty confident they will. Uh, I can swap over to a much stronger pump. Um, I'll avoid it if I don't need to. So what we're waiting for now is to see if that stand pipe has pushed the end up into that filter box. So there's far too much pipe. But like I said, I don't want to go cutting it until I know what's going on. So what I had to do, it was flooding over. You can see how wet that board is. So I just had to push that, that um, filter back a bit. Obviously I've got overspill as well as it running through the bottom of the sponges and stuff, but I can live with that. Um, so I think she's working successfully. You can see that's draining. I can see balls dropping and the water level dropping and the water running over that way. So that's great. In fact, I'm going to turn it off for a few minutes and I go and have a celebratory homemade beer. Obviously cut off while I was in having a beer. But you can see it's slowly refilling, so I'm now prepared to call it a success. Um, obviously I've got a few more things still to do, I've got to put a few more balls in. Uh, trust me, I don't have a shortage of balls that will <laughs> go in there. Oh, and there's also a garbage bin on the other side full of them. Um, but yeah, that's great, that's taken one hell of a weight off my mind, I have to say, just quietly. Uh, very happy with that. I'll be able to remove the rock once I get enough uh, balls in around the stand pipe to hold her down. Um, that's great, folks. Honestly, you've got no idea how relieved I am that this is back up and working and running. So the bloody weather conspired against me. We've had rain for over a month ever since my bed fell over. Of course, it started raining and wouldn't stop raining. Typical. Um, but I can now start and reassemble and clean up my bombshell of a yard. Have a look at it, will you? There's crap thrown everywhere. 
bits of wood, chicken feeders. Oh, Jesus. I still got to move the chooks and stuff, but there's no rush for that. That's what those big boards over there are. And I think it's a lot more manageable. Um, the big bed was good to have a bed that size. But Jesus, you know, I don't know. It just kind of wasn't working for me in the end. So I'm hoping this one works a lot better. And there you have it, the rebuild of the big boy. Um, once I tidy up the yard again and work out what I'm going to do with all the balls, uh, we'll do a garden tour next, or so, I think, eh? Uh, I feel like I've been letting you down, stuck on my bad building project. Um, so part of, part of the next one will be the garden tour, what we're thinking about putting in the aquaponics, or actually putting them in might be more interesting. Um, I'll give you a rundown on the quails because they've been going exceptionally well. We've got five in the freezer now. Getting a truckload of eggs. I eat six quail eggs a day and I'm still falling behind. I've got something like six dozen in the fridge. Unbelievable. <laughs> Two and a half dozen chook eggs. That's not mentioning the ones. Remember I did that test where I wanted to see if I could store them without refrigeration. So I think there's 10 or 11 in that container. Um, they've been in there for a few months now but I'm pretty confident that'll work. So hopefully by even come colder weather, I'll be still swimming in eggs. Alright folks, well, hopefully you got some enjoyment out of watching this crazy bloody thing come together. Um, it will get neater and nicer, like I say, but that's in videos to come. Alright, I hope you're all having a good time, and I'll catch up with you. See ya.